Hello and welcome to RPG Suite's quick and dirty tutorial on how to build a Traveler character using our Traveler Generator software. Uh, we're actually going to start from scratch. I'm, I'm here at the RPGSuite.com website. Uh, I'm going to start off by uh, uh, registering myself with a new account. And we're going to use my Trinello at RPGSuite.com. And I'm going to give myself a, uh, a password here. I'm going to remember that password. And I'm actually going to do something interesting. We're going to do that. And we're going to do that. Noah.Tornello Bang. Okay, so I'm going to register myself here. Let's see if I got my uh, password correct. Yeah, looks like I did. Um, now, you'll notice that my username is Noah.Tornello, and that's important when we download our software. Um, you'll need to know that to log in using your, your same uh, uh, email using your same address you'll notice that the bang the exclamation point wasn't there anything after the at sign was also not there I'm going to go to shop and we're gonna pull down the uh, free version of the travel character generator I'm gonna add that to my cart and then I am going to just proceed to checkout it's free for anyone to try. Put my billing details in here. There we are. I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions, place my order. And now I've got my order details, but what I really have that I like there is the, the links that I can just click on and download the software. So I'm going to click on the link and it wants to save the file, so I will absolutely do that. Looks like it says it's going to take five minutes to download. It is a larger file with packed full of lots of good stuff. We'll let that uh, download. I'm on a somewhat slow internet connection at the moment, so give that a moment. You'll also notice that we're up to version 2.2. And if you don't uh, have version 2.2, I highly recommend logging in and uh, downloading it, which you can do just by logging back into RPGSuite.com. And you'll, you'll see these links when you, uh, you log in. If you go to, say, my account, and just scroll down, there they are, right there for you if you ever need them again. So here we are, and we've successfully downloaded the Traveler Character Generator. I'm going to take a quick peek at it. It's right there. So now all I'm going to do is to open it up with the archive utility. There it is. I'm going to double click it. There's the character generator. I'm just going to drag it over to the application. This is on a Mac. On a PC, you, you have the uh, going to replace the one I already have. Um, you're going to have the uh, normal experience that, that you would imagine with the uh, setup guiding you through it. It's pretty quick actually on a PC. All right, that's all closed out. Now I'm going to run it. Yes, I'm sure I want to run this. So here we are running the TCG and I need to use the same username that we saw back on the website. And here it's just my first name and my last name. And I have to use the same password to log in. Now, this software does work offline. You still do need to use your username password. Uh, but the very first time you run it, you have to be online. So you have to be online at least once so that it can obtain all the purchases that you've made and all the background material that it needs to run. So we're going to log in. 
Now, when it logs in, it's going to say, hello, right? So welcome. That's how you know you've logged in. And now for the first time, it, since I'm downloading this for the first time, it's, it's pulling everything that it needs. This includes things like careers, contacts, rivals, enemies, skills, planets that you can be from. This includes uh, different models. This includes all kinds of things. And you can see that happening. Notice there's a progress bar here that uh, tracks the progress. And there's your classic Type S Scout Courier, the canonical traveler ship. There should be one coming around the horizon any minute now. Here, we have a bunch of different buttons, but only two of them are enabled. This one is for characters, and that's the one that we're going to focus on. These are different coming attractions uh, that we are working on, but are not yet available. You can, of course, exit the application. Let me see here, characters. Now you'll notice I can build a new character, but I can't load a character. And that's because I don't have a character saved. In the Traveler Character Generator, it is actually concerned with characters that are not yet complete. So there are partially completed characters or characters which we say are in progress. The Traveler Character Generator doesn't actually load back up completely finished characters. Oh, and there's that Type S Scout Courier. Um, but you can load those up in the DCS. It does, however, provide you a complete character sheet that you can use at any time. Uh, and we will show that to you. Let me go ahead and click New Character. Here we go. Now, this is the race screen. This is where you get to choose your race. If you had the complete core package, you would also have Varger and Aslan to choose from. And you would simply click on the Varger or click on the Aslan. They would rotate into place and you could uh, build your character from that race. Since this is the trial traveler character generator, uh, all I have are humans, which, you know, I'm partial to humans myself. I'm going to uh, roll up my character. I have three tries. I have three times I can roll my stats. I'm going to try once, click, 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 and 10, 7, let's see, what do I get? 9, 8, 8, that's really not bad, actually, that's, that's pretty good. Um, so I, I'm going to just stick with that, because I could do a lot worse than that. So I'm going to be pretty good at something, I'm, I'm going to say, mm, I'm, a, I'm a relatively smart fellow, let's, let's do that. And I'm a relatively dexterous fellow, uh, and I have an you know average endurance and relatively uh, uh, let, let, let's let's in fact give it uh, 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 an average strength. We'll have a a slightly less or exactly average soch and a, a regular endurance. You'll notice that what I did was I just took these and these individual roles. And I drag them to where they where I wanted them to be, and that's how I assign my stats. So I'm actually going to keep that, uh, and I'll say yay. Now, if I wanted to, I could hit this button again, and it would reroll my stats. Uh, but I I really like those stats, so I'm going to keep that. Now we get to the homeworld screen. This is where you choose where your character is from, and your background skills. Now, in the first edition game your background skills were tied relatively tightly to what world you came from. So if you came from a desert world, you had a certain set of skills. If you came from a, a poor world or a highly populated world, you might have streetwise. In the second edition, that is no longer the case. You just have a complete set of skills you can choose from, and you can choose a home world, but they don't have to be related. I would like to pick a home world that is, uh, let's say it was poor and... Uh, let's say that it was mm, high population. And these are the worlds in the Spinward Marches, which is the default sector that it comes loaded with, that meet that criteria. And I can click on them, and you'll see, okay, there's the world, or let's click on Aki, or up oh, there's that, that world, and you can find it's got the starport, its size, and all the information. Uh, it is an amber zone, which is kind of interesting. Um, and, and so it looks like a, an interesting world to come from. I'll choose that. And I think I get three additional skills. So I have three background skills I can choose, zero level skills. 
I'm definitely going to take Streetwise. Um, it's a poor world. I probably spent some time on the streets, so I'm, I'm definitely going to take that. I am I love to take Medic because I, I just feel that both in the game and in real life, knowing basic CPR is uh, and basic first aid is, is very, very helpful. And the other thing I'm going to take is mechanics because being able to, to tinker with engines and, and things to be able to fix things in, in a pinch could really, really help. You'll notice that as I select these skills, the number of skills I need go down. The skills that I have are already highlighted. Uh, and the uh, definition of the skills are right here. So I can see what each one of these are. Now let's say I make a mistake and I want to choose flyer. Or I didn't mean to choose flyer. I could click on flyer again and I can remove that skill. And again, I have to select three skills before I go on. So I'm going to pick my mechanic, which I said I, I wanted. I'll, I'll add that. And now I can accept that home world and, and move on. Ah, here's where I choose my name. So I'm going to be uh, Luger Hot Jorensen. Why not? I'll be a, a guy. And here I am. So this is my, my basic character. This is, this is where the bulk of the character generation happens. Uh, you can see your, your avatar sort of in the background. And I have my character sheet. Now notice it was in the lower left-hand corner. I could click on it at any time during the rest of character generation. And you'll notice that there's my stats, there's my name, there's my species information. This is where I was raised. This is my skills. These are my finances. And you can tell that as we get contacts, equipment, and career history that I'll fill in here. You can also see these little edit tabs. If you want to, if for some reason your character generation so far didn't work out the way you wanted to, or your GM says, hey, you know what, you, your, your strength is a two, I don't, I don't want that, you can click here and modify these things. So for instance, I'm going to just take my Soch and I'm going to drag it down to a six. You know, we'll say, okay, great. So you'll note the box flashes to let you know that it's changed. As information changes throughout character generation, we want you to know what's going on. So the box that that uh, uh, has to do with that information will flash, so you know that it's changed. And in conjunction with other information on the screen, you'll be able to understand what's happening to your character as you make decisions and progress through your character's uh, career, which is the greatest thing about the uh, Traveler Character Generation mini game. It's just a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Now, normally, I would have a whole list of careers to choose from. But in the trial TCG, the free TCG that you can download, there is really Drifter and Prisoner. Unfortunately, or fortunately, you can't opt to choose to be a prisoner. Um, you have to have an event that sends you to jail for some reason. And so I can really only choose to be a Drifter, which I choose. And that fits my character. I, my Soch is a... Just a little bit lower than average, but but relatively decent. Yeah, uh, I get all this information about my career. Per, for instance, the chance to qualify. Here, I can see that I have a 100% chance to qualify. This thing here is a dice widget. You'll see it show up over and over and over again. And here's what it means. I'm going to use uh, uh, this die widget as an example. So here... It's talking about advancement. If I chose to be in the barbarian assignment of Drifter, it says, look, it's strength-based, and you do not have a strength bonus. And if I check my strength over here, you'll see, oh, look, I got an 8, and yeah, I don't, don't really have a bonus. And therefore, I need to roll a 7. If I roll a 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2 on two dice, I'm not going to make it. So at a glance, this widget here tells me, well... I need to roll a 7 or better in order to advance as a Barbarian. Same thing with Survival. If I go down to Wanderer Skills, or if I go down to Wanderer as an assignment, I can see that it's a little bit different. Advancement is based on my uh, intelligence, and I actually have a bonus. Now here, I can see that the die widget starts at a 3. Why? Because the 3 is the minimum number I'm going to roll. 2d6 plus 1, the minimum thing I can roll is a 3. And normally, I would need a 8 or better in order to advance, but because I've got that plus 1, I need a 7 or better. So I can see that if I roll 2d6 and get a 7 or better, which is 
this uh, this much, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna get through. So so that's that's useful. So that's the die widget. We'll see that over and over and over again. More information on the screen. There's just jam packed full of stuff. There are a description of what a drifter is, the service skills for a drifter. If this was Navy or Marines, you would also see commissions and the probability you could take a commission. You see all three assignments, some of which we went through. You see the skills associated with each of those assignments. As a barbarian, you could pick up animals, stealth, carouse, seafarer, blade, survival. As a scavenger, you could pick up small craft, vac suit, mechanic, profession, astrogation, or gun combat. That says belter to me. And you know what? I really want to be a belter. So I don't have much of a choice in the basic version. I'm going to go ahead and qualify for drifter. I do that. Surprise, surprise. I roll my dice and I qualify since I had a 100% chance. That's wonderful. Um, we will go ahead and proceed. Now, over here, again, you can see the history as you generate it. If you want to turn that off, that is this button right here, the clock button. So I can turn that off, I can turn that on, I can see my history as I go through it. As you're generating your character, if you want to scroll back and see what happened or, or see a particular event or, or whatnot that you've long since gone past, the history is where you're going to do that. The other thing I can do, now that we're talking about these buttons up here, this button right here is settings. And by clicking on it, I can do things like turn on the background music. I happen to like this background music, so I, I think I'm gonna leave that on. The other thing I can do is I can change my die rolling times. Now you notice when I was generating my stats, the stats popped up one after another, and, and, that, and that was good, but I'd like it to go a little bit faster. So I'm gonna change that to down there a little bit, it's gonna go a little bit faster, and we'll see this happening much more quickly. I have qualified, I'm gonna go in, and here I am. So I'm in the drifter career, and I have to choose what assignment am I gonna go into. And again, I can take a look at all of the information for each assignment, a definition of what they are, right? I can see what skills I'll get, and I can see my chances of advancing and surviving. And if you notice, I actually have a decent chance at advancing as a, a wanderer, and I suppose I could go and do that, but I really do want to be a, more, more of a belter type guy, and I think the, the scavenger really plays into that. And I'm just going to turn that down a little bit more. There we go. Uh, so I click scavenger, <clears throat> and it says, okay, I get my basic training. I get the six skills, and since it's the first time I've ever done basic training, I get the six skills that are associated, or rather that are the service skills, with being a drifter. Here they are, and you can see them here. When I hit begin term, you'll notice that this box flashes because I've gotten those skills, and you can also see in your career history that those skills have also showed up there. Now I'm training. I get to pick a skill that I would be able to train for within my, uh, I get to, uh, within my career, which is uh, drifter. So I've got personal development skills and I can click on that. These are the actual skills. These are the definitions of those skills. When you have things like a stat increase, it'll actually say, well, your stat is currently at eight, but if you take this, it'll go to a nine. If you happen to get this, you'll go, you'll go to a nine. Those are service skills available to everyone in the career. And these are available only to scavengers. And I, that jack of all trades is really nice and I like it, but I want to be a belter. So I'm, I'm going to learn more about, uh, maybe I'll get astrogation, maybe I'll get uh, small craft. I'm, that's what I'm looking for. So I'll go ahead and, and choose that, that, that table to roll on. My dice roll really quickly because I set them to do so. And it says, well, you roll a two. You got the second thing on the table. And that means that you gained a level of mechanic. So I proceed and this flashes. It says, look, you gain mechanic one. And if I pull this up, I can see, yep, look, I, I gain mechanic one. That's great. Now we're going to go to the survival roll. It already rolled because I set it to roll really quickly. And what did I get? I got a four plus one. It was endurance based, so that's plus zero. So that's five total. I got a five. And why is this red? Well, this is red because I needed a seven to survive. This is, this is just not good for me. All right. Things hasn't, haven't gone as planned. Let's find out what went wrong. I roll a five, 
uh, on the mishap table. And then it says, you are betrayed by a friend. One of your contacts or allies betrays you, ending your career. That contact or ally becomes a rival or enemy. If you have no contacts or allies, then you are betrayed by someone you never saw coming. Uh-oh. Well, I don't have any contacts uh, or allies, but it uh, looks like I'm about to gain a rival or an enemy. Let's pick an enemy because, hey, why not? <laughs> it's not bad that there's somebody out there to kill me, is it? Turns out my enemy is an alien thief. Okay, I wonder what happened to, for me to make an alien thief angry. And you'll notice these two boxes flashed. Why? One, because the alien thief showed up right, as an enemy. And two, because I aged to 22 years old. <clears throat> Here it says, do you want to stop aging? Anagathics in Traveler in Mongoose 2nd Edition, you can choose to start Anagathics and use Anagathics, which will stop you from aging. They are illegal, they are hard to get, and they are enormously expensive. And my characters almost, almost, but not never, uh, choose to use anagathics. As you click on different choices, you'll notice that information about those choices shows up over here. That's true throughout the entire program. And if I want to start anagathics, it says, well, once you're on anagathics and a force to stop, bad things will happen, they're expensive, they're illegal, I can get those details there. This is what happens if I choose maybe later. And if I choose never use anagathics, I'll never be asked the question. Now, it has been pointed out to me, why are you asking about anagathics when your character is only 22 years old and you don't start making aging rolls? Age doesn't start affecting you until 34. Well, because when you start using anagathics, you stop aging. So if you want to look like you're 22 years old forever, then you have to start using anagathics when you're 22. But I'm, uh, you know what? I'm going to choose go ahead and use anagathics, okay? And we're going to roll, and you'll see right here that it's a soch based roll. I need a 10 or better to, to make it work. I have a soch bonus of plus zero, and I rolled an eight. So that means I fail, and I don't get anagathics. But I just want to show you, we, we've already seen a little bit of the drifter career. I just want to show you what can happen if you... Uh, critically fail trying to get anagathic. So I'm going to use a little Easter egg here where I can manually change my die roll. <laughs> I'm going to roll a two, which is a critical failure, and then I'm going to proceed and see what happens. Well, first of all, I'm unable to find anagathics, which you would expect since I failed in the first place. I looked everywhere, but I couldn't get it. Nobody was willing to give it to me. Also not surprising because they're very expensive and I'm very poor. However, I'm going to prison. Oh no, the authorities found out that I was searching for anagathics. Not only is my career over, which it was really over anyway, um, but I'm even on my way to prison. That's horrible. At this point, I would uh, muster out, but as I had a mishap, I have no, uh, no, uh, no uh, benefits or anything to roll. So I, I just, I don't even pass go. I don't collect $200. I just go straight to prison. Ah! All right. Now, unlike other careers, to get out of prison, your advancement role must exceed your parole, every, your parole value every term. Um, so what, what happens is normally you go, you get a skill, you survive, you choose... Uh, you get an event, and you choose a. Uh, you go through advancement, uh, and then you can choose to leave the career or not. In this particular case, you don't get to just say, "Hey, I'm done with prison. Just let me out." Uh, you have to make parole. So we'll see how that works. Lower is better. I roll two dice. I add four. I roll an eight. I add four. I get a twelve. I'm going to be in prison for a little while. Now, as a prisoner. I could be an inmate, a thug, or a fixer. It is, in fact, an entirely no different career path. Okay, so I think my advancement is pretty good as a fixer. It's 83%. Advancement is very easy. It's actually based on endurance. But survival is based on intelligence. And survival is a little bit harder. Um, I think I'm going to take my chances and I'm, I'm going to be a fixer. So I will do that, and it says, hey, I have to uh, pick a skill to have it level one. As a zero level fixer, I get either blade one, bludgeon one, natural one, or unarmed. I'm actually going to pick up uh, unarmed 
one because I'm not going to be able to get too many weapons in in uh, in prison, and uh, and having an on one is probably a, a good thing to do. Now I can pick a single. Uh, since this is my second career, technically, I don't get to get all of the skills that, that are on the, the service skill table. I have to pick one. And here, of the skills on the table, I only don't have three of them. Deception, and I can see what the description of deception is. Profession, I can see what that is. And persuade. I think I'm going to try to be more persuasive. So we're going to pick that up at zero. And you can see, yes, I did pick that up at zero. So now, just like when I was a drifter, I have to choose a training focus. And you know what? I see jack of all trades on personal development. So I'm going to go on personal development. And well, it turns out I, I got educated better. I rolled a five. I didn't get jack of all trades, but I got an increase in education. And that's, that's not too bad. What does that make my uh, education now? Uh, it's a nine. I'm, I'm doing really well with it, actually. Uh, I managed to survive. I managed to survive incredibly well. I actually rolled... Uh, box cars uh, plus my int is a thir is is a, is a thirteen. Wow! Look at that. So that's really good news. Um, I still have events in prison, and in this particular case, event number five is vocational training. So if I roll my education uh, eight or better, so if I make a skill roll, I roll two d six. My education bonus, which is now plus one, gets to add into it then I, I could get any one skill except Jack of all trades. So let me try uh, the one skill I really love to have, but that's all right. We'll go ahead and proceed. Um, I rolled an eight. I add my education of one. That's a nine. I needed an eight. That's great. I succeed. Notice that the green numbers are glowing. Um, and it says gain any one skill except Jack of all trades. So I'm going to look through this list. And I, you know what? I'd really like to be able to do, I want to, I want to go into uh, the verse. So I think I want to get um, pilot. Let's see. Do, do, do. Spacecraft. This is, sub, this is specialization of pilot. I want to get spacecraft, 110 vehicles. I confirm that choice. Very good. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I picked that up. I uh, did, in fact, advance. I'm now prisoner one. Because I advanced, I am going to um, get another skill. And the skill that I want to take, I'm going to go for that jack of all trades again. Come on, jack of all trades. Ah, I am stronger, though. I've lived in weights in prison. This is, this is actually doing wonders for, for my attributes. Um, oh, I don't make parole. My advancement was a 10 and my parole was a 12. So I have to stay in prison. Now, however, every year my, my parole goes down, every four years my parole goes down, and now I need to make an 11. So let's keep going and see if I can get out of jail. I am going to try my luck at being a, try my luck at being an inmate rather than a fixer. Why? Because now that my strength is up a little bit, um, I have a, a slightly better chance of advancing and I have a much better chance, see how there's only five things lit up here and there's six things lit up here, of surviving. So I want to survive with as few mishaps as possible. I want to choose inmate. Normally, when you're in something other than prison and other than drifter, changing your, your assignment would require you to requalify for, for the career. But since I'm in prison and it's not like they're going to say I'm not fit to be an inmate, I don't have to worry about that here. All right, I'm gonna again try that personal development. I don't know, maybe I'll get that jack of all trades. We'll give a roll, strength one. <laughs> my strength goes up yet again. Well, uh, let's see how my survival roll goes. I rolled a five, my endurance is plus zero. So five, I need a seven. This this is actually not good. Exactly the reason I joined the inmate uh, assignment uh, uh, backfired on me. Let's see, bad things happen. I am disgraced. Word of my criminal past reaches my homeworld. I lose a Soch. Oh, no. Which actually hurts because my Soch was a uh, six and now it's a five. So it's at negative one. I do my inmate advancement roll. I roll five plus four is nine plus one is ten, which is great. Remember, though, that my parole value was an 11. So it looks like I'm not going to get out. 
this uh, this term either, but we'll see that a little bit later on. I do, however, advance. Yay! So I get to pick one skill that I have at level one as a uh, second uh, rank two uh, 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 inmate. Some people looked at this and they said, wow, look, I'm, I'm changing my stats. That's actually not true. Dexterity is a skill. Uh, it, it replaces, for instance, athletics coordination in the first edition. And uh, it's useful for where you would normally have used 0G or any time that, that you're trying to do something where you would just make a straight dex check. Having a level in dexterity gives you quite a bonus there. So I, I'm going to do that. This, this would be true for endurance and strength as well, but I'm going to do it for, uh, for dexterity because, again, I like being in space. I wanted to be a, a belter. It didn't work out, but it's still my dream. Uh, and now I can choose my training focus because I got, uh, I got that promotion. Again, I'm going to try personal development because I want that jack-of-all-trades. Come on! Yay! Woo-hoo! Jack-of-all-trades. Jack-of-all-trades is a lovely skill. What it does is normally when you don't have a skill and you need to use it, you suffer a negative three. But for every level of jack of all trades you have, up to a maximum of three, that penalty is reduced. Therefore, if you happen to get jack of all trades up to level three, it's the equivalent of having all skills at essentially level zero, which is incredibly, incredibly powerful. This says right here that my character is a little bit better. He's, I guess the best way to say it is he sucks a little bit less at doing just about anything. So we'll move forward with that. And again, I'm still in prison. I didn't make parole. My advancement was 10. My parole was an 11. But now my new parole is 10. So it's getting a better and better chance of getting out here. I start a new term. You'll notice that my age has gone up to 30. And you'll also notice that I don't get asked for anagathics anymore. Why is that? Because they're not available in prison. All right. I, I, all right, fine. I'm going to go back to being a fixer. Clearly, that's, that's what I was meant to be. Um, I'm going to do some fixerish things since I got a, a level of my jack of all trades. Ooh, I gained a level of stealth. I'm now a little bit sneakier. That's great. Oh, look at that. I, I failed my survival roll again. Look at, look at that snake eyes. This is just not going to be good. So bad things happen to me. I get persecuted by a gang. Prison gang persecutes me. I can choose to fight back if I wish. Uh, but if I if I do not, I lose all benefit rolls from the prison career. No! If I fight back, I roll my melee unarmed, uh, fail, and I roll twice in the injury table and take the lower result, succeed, and I gain an enemy and raise my prayer threshold by, by one. I really want to get out of jail, but I don't have any stuff. I don't have any benefits from my previous career, so I want to keep those. So what's my what's my choice? And again, there's there's the, the event, and I get to choose what am I going to do. Um, I'm going to fight back, actually. I, I think this is this is terrible. I, I don't like being persecuted. I, I fail miserably, but look, I'm going to just fudge this a little bit. And amazingly, I did very well. I succeeded. Da, da, da. Nobody controls me. Um, I made an enemy, a imprisoned weapons inspector, who <laughs> is now really angry and wants to kill me. Um, I roll my advancement. And you know what? I'm just going to change my advancement roll to a 12. Look at that. I, I advance. I'm now a prisoner level 3. And <clears throat> I, I think I'm going to roll again on um, personal development with the hope that I get jack of all trades. Ah, unarmed plus 1. Unarmed actually is still a really good thing to have. And I make parole. Why is that? Well, I fudged my advancement roll. I, I would have needed an 11. My parole was at a 10. I did a bad thing. It went up to an 11. With a 12, I actually get out. Um, I get released after only 12 years in jail. Oh, not good. That's all right. Now, uh, since I am 34, I have to roll for aging effects. And I'm fine. I, I managed to roll a, a 7. I have no detrimental uh, aging effects. I do age gracefully. I actually get to muster out. So I want to explain this a little bit. Here it says, I have four benefit rolls left, of which you can use a maximum of three rolls for cash. You only get three cash rolls total in your life. So no matter how many careers you choose to go in and out of, <clears throat> the total number of cash rolls you can take is three. Now, I wasn't able to take any rolls in my previous career, so I still have all three of my cash rolls. But I will say, I'll show you here, cash in prison, not so good. Actually, quite terrible. So I rolled a two. I get nothing. 
Again, it says, look, you have three benefit rolls. Two of them can be used for cash. Obviously, I decrease one. I'll try again. I need some money, guys. Some money. And again, I get nothing. Now, sometimes you can actually have uh, something here that says you might have two benefit rolls and a maximum of three of them can be used for cash rolls. So that can be a little confusing, but what it's saying is this is what you have left in your life and these are the roles that you have for your current career. I'm actually gonna take a benefit because I wanna get something. Uh, available choices are melee, melee, streetwise, recon. Well, oh, it looks like I, I uh, gain a skill. I can take melee, I can take recon, or I can take streetwise. I think I'm gonna take, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna take uh, streetwise. I wanna raise my awareness on the streets, uh, which makes sense coming out of prison, I guess. Uh, I have one benefit roll left. I'm going to take just a regular benefit. And I get an ally. And I roll again to see who my ally is. On a four, I get a board nobile. <laughs> Fantastic. So 34, actually, or 31 here. Um, there are bugs still in the software. We are still working. We work it every day, and we release relatively frequently. If you find a bug that you want us to know about, we want to know. Please let us know. We, we will fix them as quickly as we can. We keep... Uh, a series of issues uh, alive that we, we work regularly, um, and we can put this on the issue list. To do so, simply go to rpgsuite.zendesk.com, and there's a, uh, an option there to add an issue. Uh, go ahead and add one, and we'll actually get that information. So I, I understand that noble is misspelled, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely take care of that. We'll proceed. Roll to determine the amount of medical coverage I gained from my career. So I must have gotten injured in my career. And I got a miracle um, quite a bit. It says, oh, my Soch was injured. <laughs> Not a real injury. I'm going to save money. What's the next step in my character's life? Um, here I have the following choices. I can choose to... Make connections. Connections are wonderful. They're part of the best part of Mongoose Traveler character generation. It's where you can connect to other players in the game. I can skip connections or I can choose a different career. I only have Drifter as a career option. I've really had four terms, or um, uh, which is enough to start uh, playing the character. Um, I'm going to make connections uh, and show you how that works. Okay. You can see I'm wearing my orange jumpsuit. Orange is the new black, by the way, uh, because the last career I had was Prism. Um, what happens is you can have up to two other individuals that you share one of your or one of their events from. And for every connection that you have, up to two, you can gain an additional skill. So it's very useful. This really, really helps when you have a group of other players and you want to have a reason for them to be hanging out. They, they, they all want to start out wanting to help each other with common goals in mind. Creating c connections to other players are very helpful. And this is how you do it. Here I'm going to pretend that I have two other uh, characters in my, in my party. Uh, we're going to say that one of them was uh, uh, Sasha uh, uh, Berkowitz. There. And uh, Sasha is, let's see, I'm what, 34 years old? Yeah. So we'll say Sasha is 34 years old. And we'll say that Sasha is human and a male. Oh, no, no, we'll say male. And then um, and the career that Sasha was in, Rogue. Well, because that just makes sense, doesn't it? That seems to be the people I've been hanging out with. I'll choose Pirate because why not? Arg. Um, we'll proceed. And now I get to choose what event do I share with Sasha? How are they connected in my character's history? And here, I can either create an event for them and, and, and type in this is what happened and this is when it happened, uh, or I can say these are the events that I've had. Going all the way back to my mishap as a um, drifter, moving forward into prison, uh, you can see... Uh, uh, I got uh, uh, training and a new skill. You know what? I think he's going to be involved with my mishap. I like that. All right, so we're going to proceed with that. So now we've got Sasha Berkowitz when I failed my survival role uh, as a drifter. 
Okay. Now the second person I'm going to connect with will be, uh, let's make an alien. Let's make, uh, La Daria Kvarger. <laughs> you know it's an alien because I use a lot of apostrophes. Um, and we'll we'll make uh, we'll make her uh, we'll make her also 34 years old, and we'll choose uh, Varger, and we'll make her female, and we'll say that she was a uh, noble, and um, she was a dilettante. That's kind of interesting. How could I have met her? How about I met her? when I got vocational training. Maybe she came in to help give training and that's how we met. So we'll do that. Uh, and, and you can see, here's your first connection, Sasha Berkowitz, when, you know, what, what happened? I failed my survival role as a drifter. Then connection two, Lagaria Kavarger, um, who came in to help me with some vocational training. I'll go ahead and hit proceed. And here I can put in those details. So how did I meet Sasha Berkowitz? Um, Sasha Berkowitz, I met, uh, uh, he was a pirate while I was attempting to be a belter. Things didn't work out for me, but he gave me some good information about how to survive in the slammer. That's how I met. And since he gave me this good information about how to survive in the slammer, I'm going to actually say that what he did was he raised my streetwise by one. So we'll take that. And then Lagaria Kavarger. All right. <laughs> what happened there? Um, she uh, was volunteering. Uh, we'll say she was giving her time to a uh, halfway workhouse for prisoners and uh, uh, became enamored. Hmm, why not? I uh, see. How about this? And uh, fell in love <laughs> with uh, Luger because he's so handsome with his with his uh, orange jumpsuit. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, and we will um, we will say based on that that he learned a little bit of diplomacy because you don't want to make a rich noble uh, angry with you because I'm already got a rich noble angry with me so we'll we'll uh, we'll add that skill actually there we go um, <clears throat> now. I do happen to have, oop, I have no cash. Oh well. Um, let me see, let's add some cash. How about I give myself a thousand credits just, just, just so I can show you how to buy equipment. We'll look the other way as I steal a thousand credits from someone. <laughs> so now I've got a thousand credits and you'll notice here I have all the equipment available to me. Things that are uh, disabled, I just can't afford, and things that are not disabled, I can actually buy. I can sort my equipment by categories, including show me armor, show me computers, show me sensors, and if you had more things, there would be more categories to go with them. These, this is the minimum set of equipment that is provided with the free TCG, but nonetheless, I'm going to pick up, let's see, what are my skills are here? Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, I've got melee at zero. And you know what? I'm going to pick up a computer because they're just generally helpful. So we'll pick up a computer. Uh, and I'm going to pick up some uh, mesh armor. Uh, so we'll get that. And I'm going to pick up a blade because, you know, I need to protect myself. Now, at this point... I'm going to show you how to save a partially completed character. This character is not actually finished until I click finish. So at any point during the character generation process, like I showed you, you can click here. I'm actually going to save it here again. I'm going to save it because maybe I want to come back and, and change the uh, equipment that I purchased for the character. So we'll do that. I'll go back to characters. I'll go back to load characters. There I am. 
I load myself back up, and now here I am back on the equipment screen. So I can always get back to the screen. I like that. It's usually a, uh, a nice way to be able to keep loading your characters up in the TCG. We'll move forward. You describe yourself. Uh, you can see the information about my connection events are in there. Um, <clears throat> I can then finish. And there are my two character sheets. Now these are available um, to uh, look at electronically on your computer or on your uh, phone or whatever. Uh, they, the, the information about where they're stored are right here. But what happens by default is there's a folder created called Traveler Character Sheets right off of your main folder, your, uh, your user's home folder um, on your machine. And I'll show you how to get, get to that in a second. Um, there's my character. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and exit the application. Now, to get at that character that I just made, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Finder. I'm on a Mac, on a, uh, on a PC, you would open up the File Explorer. And you would go to your home directory. Uh, this is true for File Explorer. You'll notice that Traveler Character Sheets uh, is its own directory. And if you open that up, you can see all the character sheets um, that you've created. And in this particular case, uh, I created this character today. And I'm going to open the character sheets. I'm going to use Preview. Uh, Windows has its own native image viewer. So we'll, we'll go ahead and open up the, those character sheets there. There they are. I, I can actually zoom in a little bit so I can, I can see that uh, better. Um, let me stretch it out. I can print this. Now, um, we've been, it's, it has been requested that we have black and white character sheets. They are already created. Uh, we are working on uh, getting them integrated into the software as we speak so that you'll have a choice uh, what kind of backgrounds you'll have for your character sheets, including high contrast, uh, black and white. Uh, that is coming. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to load up your character in, uh, in the DCS. All right, thank you very much, and have fun traveling.